Remember that I am with you always, even until the end of the world. This is the Trinity Broadcasting Network, celebrating our 26th anniversary. The following program may contain material unsuitable for children. Parental guidance is suggested. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, I pray for, for this baby. I claim Don't the blood of baby. Jesus Christ over this baby. Don't pray for my baby. I, 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 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I claim the blood of Jesus over this child. Don't and pray I for my baby. bind the forces of evil, every demon of hell that would seek to cause this baby to be raised by these satanic parents. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke the way in which this baby's been dedicated to the devil, and I lay claim to this baby's soul in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit will touch this child in the womb even now. Watch and listen as Bob Larson teaches you how to protect yourself, your family, your church, and your community from the forces of evil. Bob Larson, the world's foremost authority on cults and the occult, brings to television a lifetime of knowledge and experience. Bob has traveled to more than 70 nations, researching and exposing false religions. He's authored 24 best-selling books, uncovering Satan's strategies. Bob pioneered live Christian talk radio and, for 15 years, has hosted one of America's most listened-to broadcasts. Get ready. The next half hour will change the way you view your world. Welcome. This isn't my little house of horrors. <laughs> this is your uh, basic Halloween set. The holiday is coming up. It's a season that some consider to be the devil's day. To others, it's a happy holiday. Today, I've welcomed Halloween into my setting, my radio talk show studio, so that I could confront folks whoever is out there with the truth about this unholy holiday. And today, I want you to stay tuned because you are going to find out about the horrors of Halloween. Could it be that these people really care about the victims? Could it be that they are deeply touched by this? Does anybody care about what those kids may be doing? I have to tell you, I found that you certainly made your opening statement here. No, no, have you ever, America, as the movie said, we have a chance in talk radio. Yeah, there are cases. They want to be in the foxholes. They want to be committed to all. And now, best-selling author and commentator, Bob Larson. Well, if you like me, you're sick, 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 sick of Halloween. Halloween is everywhere we go these days. However... I haven't had the last word in Halloween. I've had a lot to say about the subject of Halloween lately. Those of you who have been listening to me know that. But something happened recently when I did a show on the subject of Halloween that caught my attention. It was when a compromising Christian called me. What made it worse? This was a man of God. Hi, I'm a, I am a pastor. I'm a conservative in a, in a conservative denomination, Evangelical Presbyterian uh, Church. And I, I just don't see any problem uh, with Halloween. I mean, I, I certainly uh, do not uh, approve of some of the practices that people engage in or the Satanism. But I think a lot of this is adults and, and other Christians have blown some of these things way out of proportion and, and sort of deprived kids of some of the fun that a lot of us had when we were growing up. Most of us didn't even know that as children. It took Christian extremists like you to point that out to us. And if we had if you hadn't told us, we probably wouldn't have ever known it. Christian extremists like me. Christian extremists like me. Well, I want to know who else out there is horrified by Halloween. The true horror of Halloween. Is it ghosts, goblins, darkness, and death? It's the compromise some Christians make when dealing with the devil. That's the real horror of Halloween. Satan's power over the Christian community is limited to what we as believers allow. Donning the disguises of the devil, assuming the imagery of evil, grants the devil a right that doesn't belong to him that he shouldn't have. That is the true horror of Halloween. You know, the Apostle Paul pointed out that an idol has no power in itself. An idol of wood or stone can't control a Christian unless we concede that control. And that's my argument. 
That is the real horror of Halloween. There are three, count them, three horrors of Halloween. Desensitizing our children to actual evil. When we permit symbols of death and darkness to dominate our culture, our children grow up without any abhorrence of evil and its demonic origins. Secondly, minimizing, minimizing the devil's devices. You know, all aspects of the occult are rampant this time of year. And by failing to avoid the appearance of evil, as Paul told the Thessalonians, we give credence to the occult. Ouija boards, tarot cards, astrology, all forms of divination lead to demonic possession. Our children have got to understand that every aspect of the occult must be avoided totally and never considered a harmless pursuit of curiosity. Thirdly, the real horror of Halloween is legitimizing the agents of evil. Displaying a black cat endorses familiar spirits because that's what a black cat represented. Cats are spirit sensitive and so witches kept cats around to know when their witch or their familiar was there. Portraying ghosts and goblins adds credibility to the idea that the spooks are friendly. They're not. And depicting Satan as a red-suited devil reduces his debauchery to the level of a cartoon character. So the next time somebody says to you there's nothing wrong with Halloween, say, oh yeah, desensitizing, minimizing, and legitimizing. I want you to take a look at uh, some of the horrors of Halloween that I have right here in the radio studio with me. You want to see the hand of death? This is it. I you know, it's just beyond me why anyone would want something, a flaming hand of death. But such is the nature of this Halloween season, that some people are so afflicted with a fascination for evil, they will go to almost any length to celebrate Halloween. Amazing, isn't it? Oh, my little buddy over here, this is uh, the specter of death. Happy Halloween! <laughs> Happy Halloween! <laughs> I remember, uh, it was a kid trick-or-treating. We didn't go out with this. We just had paper bags. Now you have the skull of death. And oh, speaking of Halloween, here is Jason's hockey mac mask along with a meat cleaver can you imagine some six seven year old kid depicting a serial killer running down the street with a meat cleaver oh take a look at this this is for your dog for the pooch this is a little red cape and these are devil ears for the dog so you can have your very own devil dog and uh ah my wife pulled into a fast food restaurant got one of these little special meals for our little daughter and this is what she got the special goose bumps package fear fright or speaking of children look at this a nursing bottle with ghosts on it again desensitizing children to the reality of demons and the devil and also for the little ones a halloween baby bib and a pacifier with ghosts now ghosts are demons evil spirits right here on a baby's pacifier what is the true horror of Halloween? It's not the ghosts and the goblins. It's not the death and the darkness. It's, it's not fear and evil. The true horror of Halloween, well, it's not what the devil can do, but what we allow him to do by embracing contemporary culture during the Halloween season. That's the true horror. The true horror of Halloween is not that death is victorious, but that we glorify the enemy of eternal life with all of its ghoulish embodiments. When the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? The cross has defeated it. The true horror of Halloween, it's not that Christians have anything to fear from carved pumpkins and flying witches. But the believers allow fear a greater role than faith during the Halloween season. That's the true horror of Halloween. 
now. I've got Colleen on the line out in California. Hello, Colleen. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm just doing great today. What do you think about my stance on the horrors of Halloween? I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I think all Christians need to take a stand, and Christian parents need to wake up in the city of Bakersfield and all over the United States of America and realize what our public school systems are, do are doing to our children. You know, it's amazing to me, Colleen, at this time of the year, you can't carry a Bible into the public schools. You can't sit down and pray to God, but you can paste black cats, ghosts, goblins, and all types of depictions of the forces of darkness all over the classroom. Well, that's right, Bob. And uh, not only that, I have a daughter that's 13 now, but when she was in uh, fourth grade, she was in a classroom, and she was born again spirit-filled at the age of five, and thank God for the Holy Spirit. But she came home telling me about this music they were playing uh, for this pre-Halloween celebration. Oh, yeah. And they were actually channeling. I went in, listened to the music. Channeling in the school? In, in fourth grade. Well, what, what were they having the kids say? Whatever the words were on the record, they were repeating it uh, in a dark, you know, in a, in a fear situation. Well, 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 they got the lights turned out in the classroom. Right. And they're doing this chant in the classroom. Right. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it, it was terrible. I had her removed from the classroom, and she had to go to the library. But she, in her spirit, knew it was wrong. And she was, you know, she was very young. At that how, how old was she? I believe she was seven. Seven-year-old has more sense than... Uh, Need I say it, the pastor that we heard a moment ago, I mean, I don't mean to just pick on this pastor, right. but he's the one who said, I, you know, I, I, religious fanatics like you are causing the problem. No, I don't think, Colleen, it's religious fanatics like me. I think it's people out there who are accommodating the devil who are causing the problem. I think you're right, because you know what? God did not give us a spirit of fear, Bob, and fear is one of the, the leading problems of a mental patient that we have in the United States, mm -hmm. and we're That's not right. supposed to be fearful. Amen. Colleen, thank you. Appreciate the call. Right now, I've got Gary on the line. Gary, what do you think about the horrors of Halloween? Uh, there are no horrors of Halloween. There are no it's horrors of Halloween. It's a happy holiday. It's a happy holiday. Yeah. Why, why is it happy to you, Gary? Um, I like the atmosphere of it, the decorations. What are you, a Satanist? An atheist. You're an atheist? Yeah. Hmm. The Bible is just a book of lies. Yeah. by a bunch of yeah 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 sure uh -huh. and you could, and, and you thought you thought that all up by yourself didn't you huh yeah Come i on. did bob gary nobody influenced you to think that did they no 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 i came up with that idea on my own what is it you like about this season what is it that an atheist revels in in the atmosphere of halloween there's nothing i revel in i i don't know i just enjoy it bob you just enjoy it yeah could it be that because this season associates itself with death and darkness that you as an atheist who have no hope of life beyond the grave that you are just simply in your mind going to rot with the maggots could it be that this is compatible with your outlook of life after death yeah maybe it is mm -hmm. you're gonna rot with the maggots too but... i'm going to be resurrected oh, really? and i uh, shall know shall him not. as i am known you shall not. And, hey listen I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Do you ever uh, accept other people's beliefs besides your Christian views? Accept? Yeah. I may accept them as human beings. I don't know. I don't think you have the right idea. Either. Yeah, well, you know, Mohammed's in his grave. Buddha's in his grave. in his grave. Jesus for is 2,000 years. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. No, he he is, is risen not. from the dead. He is alive forevermore. And you know what? He's coming soon to get to uh, to judge the living and the dead. And you're going to be judged, Gary. But oh, you know I what? will be judged. No, no, Ger Gary, you don't have to. There's a way out. Because oh, Jesus really? Christ went to the cross for you. He died for you. That you could have the gift of eternal life. So that you could be saved. You too could be born again. Oh, do you know that every rotten, stinking thing you've ever done can be forgiven in a moment? That's a ridiculous Idea. Have you ever sinned? You ever done anything wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Just as everyone else has. Yeah. And who forgives you of your sins? I forgive myself. Oh, you forgive yourself. Yeah. You're your I own. Have that power. You're your own God. I am. I thought you didn't believe in God. Gotcha, Gary. Except for myself. <laughs> <laughs> I am my own guy. You are I don't your believe own in Jesus Christ. You know what's interesting? Everything you have said is absolutely consistent with the, the terminology that you find in the Satanic Bible. Now you tell it. You, you, oh, I'm a Satan. I don't believe in Satan. No, 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 no. But but this is interesting. You see, when you say I am my own God, you know that's exactly what Anton Lavey said in the Satanic Bible. It's one of the nine Satanic statements. Let me tell you. 
you are saying everything that a Satanist says, which leads me to believe that you might have been influenced by someone. Oh, uh, that was that. You've been influenced by the same devil that influences Satanists, sir. Which devil is that? Is there a devil inside of me, Bob? No. And you know why? Why not? There doesn't have to be a devil inside of you. The devil doesn't need to waste his time. You see, the devil's not like God. God is omniscient. He can be everywhere all the time. But the devil, he's limited. He just has him and one-third of the angels who fell with him. So he has limited numbers. God has got him out number two to one. So he has limited ability to do what he can do. And he doesn't need to waste his time when people like you are already doing his dirty work without him having to influence them. So, hey, he's got you where he wants you, Gary. Yeah, I remember. He, he, just, he just goes off yeah. and works on somebody who's harder to get. He's got you. Well, you're a crazy man. That's what I think. I'm a crazy man. Yeah, yeah you're, you know you're off your rocker. You know what? I am a fool for the sake of and Jesus Christ. And the Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. But it is the power of God for those of us who believe. So I'll let the word of God judge who's the true fool. For the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. I want you to know that Halloween is not only a horror, it is a hoax. And I want to tell you what the hoax of Halloween is. The hoax of Halloween is that Satan is in control of our culture. He gives this impression by the pervasiveness of his, of his imagery. But even though the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 that devil is the god of this world he can only control what we as the salt of the earth don't occupy with the savor of our presence secondly the hoax of halloween is that death is to be feared you know you see symbols of death's terror everywhere depictions of skeletons and skulls and corpses but first corinthians 15 in the word of god mocks the sting of death and declares it is defeated by the power of the resurrection the third hoax of halloween is that the departed can return as ghosts but ghosts are demons, lying, masquerading spirits, deceiving the grieving. The fourth hoax of Halloween is that the occult can tell the future. Uh-uh. You know, bobbing for apples was a form of ancient divination. That's what it's all about. The devil can't tell the future. Revelation 1.8 says Jesus Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. Only he knows the beginning and the end. The fifth hoax of Halloween is that the forces of evil must be appeased. That's what trick-or-treating is all about. You had to treat the spirits who came back from the dead at the Halloween season, or they would trick you. 1 John 3, 8 says Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. The sixth hoax of, Hall hoax of Halloween is that witches are peaceful pagans. I want to tell you, they are not the the apparently loving lesbian feminist devotees of Diana depicted on TV talk shows, but they are cultists in league with Lucifer. The seventh hoax of Halloween is that extreme evil can keep you from heaven. That's what jack-o'-lanterns were all about. There was a legend of a man named Jack so evil he couldn't get into heaven and the devil didn't want him in hell. He carved out a turnip, put a candle inside, hence the jack-o'-lantern. We just changed it to a pumpkin. But I want you to know Hebrews 7.25 says, God is able to save unto the uttermost. No one is so evil they can't make it into heaven. The eighth hoax of Halloween is that it's all right to glorify fear in fun. But I want you to know Hebrews 11:6 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God, and that fear is the enemy of faith. The ninth hoax of Halloween is that Halloween is a day to be celebrated. Christians must not compromise by legitimizing the images of evil. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 6 to come out from the devil and be separate. And... The tenth hoax of Halloween is that Halloween is a day to be dreaded. Well, it's not. There are devil-designated days, but I stand on the word of God, Psalm 118. This is the day the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Those are the ten hoaxes of Halloween. To fight back on behalf of your family, your church, and your community against what the devil does on Halloween, you need my special Halloween attack pack. It's available for a tax-deductible gift of just $49.95. If you'll call right now, 1-888-BLM-INFO. The Halloween Attack Pack includes 100 of the pamphlets I have especially written just for you on the subject of Halloween trick-or-treat. Hand them out to trick-or-treaters and witness for your faith. It also includes the two tapes, Halloween, The Devil's Day, and my tape, What's Wrong with Haunted Houses. In addition to the 100 pamphlets and the two tapes, you also get my video, The Horrors of Halloween. That's for a tax-deductible gift of just $49.95. Call right now, 
while supplies last, get them in time for Halloween. Call 1-888-BLM-INFO. John's on the line. John! Uh, <clears throat> hey, how you doing today? I'm doing all right. What do you think about Halloween, John? Well, I think it's great. You think it's uh, great? Yeah, because I'm a Satanist, and um, well, I just think it's the greatest holiday, and... Well, of course you do. You're a Satanist. No wonder you think it's a great holiday. Well, yeah, that's true, but, uh, you see, I'm going to have a... Well, I don't know if it's going to be... I'm going to have a baby soon, and... You're going to have a baby? You mean some woman's going to have a baby by you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is this, is this obviously someone you're married to? Um, no. Of course not. It wouldn't be. After all, you're a Satanist. I yes, was right, just I'm kidding, right. John. Just kidding, John. Oh, yeah, okay. You wouldn't want to get into anything like holy matrimony now, would you? Well, no, not really. But... Much better to conceive this baby in sin. Um, no, not really. See, what you said earlier about uh, babies being sacrificed on Halloween... Uh, that's a bunch of crap, because that never happens. No, and guys like you may not do that, but generational Satanists do, Luciferians well, generational do. generational Satanists do. Well, the Johnny-come-ladies, but... lately, Anton LaVey, Church of Satan, sort of neo-fascist occultist Satanists like you, who are into the archetypal images of Satan, maybe you don't do it, but the real people who are into the real thing do do it. No, I am into the real thing. Nah. I don't do it, and all my friends, they don't do it either, and... Uh, let me ask you about this little baby you're going to have. Yeah. Uh, this is just, you know, just, just some gal you're living with, huh? Uh, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Does she know you're a Satanist? Oh, yeah, she knows. And she's not all upset about conceiving a baby by a Satanist? Uh, no, she's a Satanist, too. Satanist mommy, Satanist daddy, having cute little baby? H how far away are you from having this baby? Uh, about a month. Boy or girl? Uh, I don't know. It'll be a surprise. John? How are you going to raise this baby? How am I going to raise it? Yes. I have a very good job. That's not what I mean. Spiritually, how are you going to raise this baby? Uh, well, I'm going to let it decide for itself. You've already made the decision. You're raising this baby as a Satanist. The two of you are Satanists. Well, maybe so, but... Well, I tell you um, right now... The baby I'm, can decide for itself. I'm going to pray for that baby right now. Well, you go ahead. I'm going to pray for that baby. Go ahead. And I want the prayer family all over this country and everybody right now who's listening to me to join with me in prayer. Don't pray for my baby. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, pray I for pray for baby. this baby. I claim Don't the blood of baby. Jesus Christ over this baby. Don't pray for my baby. I, 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 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I claim the blood of Jesus over this child. Don't and pray I for my baby. I bind the forces of evil, every demon of hell that would seek to cause this baby to be raised by these satanic parents. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke the way in which this baby's been dedicated to the devil, and I lay claim to this baby's soul in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit will touch this child in the womb even now, and that this precious little baby will come to know the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I bind the spirits. I bind the spirits that are going to seek to raise this baby to worship the devil. And in the name of Jesus, I loose this child to worship and to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Don't pray for my baby. John? Yep. Man, it's too late. I just did. Well. And you know what? What? The power of the Holy Spirit by which I prayed is greater than the power of the demons that are in you and that the devil wants to put into that baby. Folks, we've got to keep praying for that little baby. We've got to keep praying for that precious child. Agree with me that God is going to save the life of that child before it's too late. Wow. Most of you have never heard anything like that. This man and the woman he lives with having a baby for the devil. But did you notice the fear of the demon forces that controlled him when I began to pray? <laughs> he kept saying, don't pray for my baby, don't pray for my baby. I want you to I want you to know that wasn't just him speaking. That was the devil speaking. The devil wants that baby, but you know something? Greater is Christ is, who is in us than anything that the devil has in this world. And I want you to know the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And through the power of that prayer, I believe that baby is going to be saved. I believe that while you and I prayed, the power of the Holy Spirit reached right down into the womb and touched that baby. And that baby is going to come forth not to serve the devil, but to serve God as a sign of the miracle power of Jesus Christ at work. 
thank you for praying with me. Thank you for being there to be part of this miracle moment as we reached into the womb by the power of God to save that baby from the clutches of the forces of darkness. I think you can see now why God has raised up this ministry, why he's put me in front of that camera, why he's put me behind this microphone. And with this task that's before me, I need you praying. I need you supporting and blessing and backing and interceding for this ministry. You can see what I'm up against. This is real spiritual warfare. But thank God I've got friends like you who are there to help me fight this fight for the sake of babies yet unborn. You and I have an important task ahead of us. Thank you for praying and believing and joining me in this battle to save our children. This year on Halloween, you can fight back with my Halloween attack pack. For your tax-deductible gift of just $49.95, I want to send you 100 trick-or-treat Halloween pamphlets to hand out to trick-or-treaters, plus my two tapes, Halloween the Devil's Day and What's Wrong with Haunted Houses. In addition to the 100 pamphlets and the two tapes, you also get my video, The Horrors of Halloween. Call right now, 1-888-BLM-INFO. I want you to have these materials in time for Halloween, so you must call now while supplies last. That's the 100 pamphlets to hand out to trick-or-treaters, my two tapes, Halloween the Devil's Day, and What's Wrong with Haunted Houses, as well as the video, The Horrors of Halloween. Don't put it off. Get the Halloween Attack Pack. Fight back. Call 1-888-BLM-INFO. Kids today are being bombarded with sexual enticement from TV, movies, music, even the telephone. That's right, statistics show an alarming upsurge in kids using the telephone to reach 900 pornography lines. That's why I'm so proud to be associated with Lifeline, the Christian long-distance company that has the integrity to do something about this dangerous trend. You see, Lifeline alerts you if someone uses your phone to make calls to a 900 pornography line. And Lifeline refuses to profit from those calls. That alone is reason for a Christian family to switch to Lifeline. But Lifeline will also donate 10% of the billing on every domestic long-distance call you make to help support Bob Larson Ministries. And rates are only 10 cents a minute, 24 hours a day. Plus, as a special welcome, Lifeline will give you 30 minutes of free domestic long-distance service. So is it a time you took a stand with the hundreds of thousands of Christians who've chosen Lifeline? I want you to pick up the phone right now and call toll-free 1-800-805-0506 and switch to Lifeline today. Thank you for being a part of today's telecast. Bob Larson has spent more than finally rise and be healed. You can receive this informative and balanced teaching series today for your gift to the ministry of $30 or more. Write to Benny Hinn, P.O. Box 90, Orlando, Florida, 32802. Or for faster service, call toll-free, 1-800-433-1900. Write or call today. On December 3, 1999, Benny Hinn will mark his 25th anniversary in the ministry, and you're invited to attend a special celebration in Anaheim, California. Dinner will be served followed by a special program commemorating Benny Hinn's 25 years in ministry. The Ralph Carmichael Orchestra will perform, and scheduled participants include Oral Roberts, Rex Humbard, Paul Crouch, Evie Hill, and Jack Hayford. Tickets for the dinner and celebration are $100. Seating is limited, so you must call 1-407-292-4200 today and make your reservation. This week, Benny Hinn will hold the next Miracle Crusade at the Arrowhead Pond Arena in Anaheim, California, October 21st and 22nd. On October 29th, a historic one-night miracle service will be held at the Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. And in November, he'll be at the Pavilion in Boise, Idaho. The truth about the ancient prophecies is about to be revealed. You and I, we 